What's up guys, H of Masters here today with another LEGO My Uncle 2016 Summer Set Review, this time on item number 71312, Akimu the Mask Maker. Taking a quick look at the box, you see ages are 7 to 14, 94 pieces, and your picture of Akimu. On the back, you got another picture of Akimu, showing off all the functions, and a comic. So now let's go ahead and open this. Alright, so here is Akimu all built up, and first thing I want to say right away, this is a fairly interesting set. First thing I want to talk about right away is the obvious thing, the colors. Now the colors on this set, they're just all over the place. You can see there's a lot of trans blue, and personally, even after getting the set in hand, I'm still not really a huge fan of the color distribution. I just don't think it really works out. But it is kind of nice to see, and it's not too bad, but it is just kind of too much in my opinion. Alright, so taking a look at Akimu's legs, as you can see, they are relatively simple. Pretty much every other set in this wave has some sort of thing going on here. Akimu, nope, just relatively simple. He's got this sort of boot look going on here with the gold, and then he just goes up to a trans blue. Taking a look at his arms, you can see they are also relatively simple. There isn't anything too crazy with them, they're all CCBS, although one thing to note is they are actually asymmetrical with the way they are built, and they've done the same thing on Onua. Now basically, you can see right here, this is a gray joint and that one's trans blue, and they are two completely different joints. I'm not sure why they did that, because it doesn't really change anything. If they would have used this piece, it wouldn't have made any difference except for it would have gave this arm a little bit more of uh, range of motion. So taking a look at Akimu's weapons, the first one here is a shield. It is relatively nice, it's extremely similar to the shield he had in the 2015 version of him from the uh, Mask Maker vs. Skull Grinder set, except for this one is a sort of trans blue saw instead of a silver one. And it actually is pretty nicely attached. It is a wrist mounted thing and what they did is they took some pieces here, as you can see, two Exoforce hands plus this piece and that's there. You can sort of spin this around, although it doesn't really spin around freely like if you move it like this. It isn't gonna, you know, start spinning all over the place like some of the other shields, although personally I don't really mind that. I think it is just a relatively nice thing. And you can even sort of move this so you can get some poses with it. Taking a look at Akimu's other weapon, he has this hammer. Now, there's nothing too crazy here. It is a pretty nicely done hammer though. As you can see, it does use that brand new crystal piece that they've been using throughout this wave. And it actually is pretty nice. It works out pretty well, and it does look pretty good and like a pretty decent weapon. Taking a look at Akimu's torso, you can see it is the same uh, chest piece used for all of the Toa from 2016. Except for this one is a trans light blue mixing with these sort of gold designs. And I have to say, this actually looks extremely nice. It is very cool looking. And it does just give off this really cool vibe for the set. Now taking a look up here, you can sort of see they gave Akimu these sh shoulder pads. Now these shoulder pads are interesting because they do serve a nice purpose because if you look to the side here, you can actually kind of see his arms are very set back. And that is because of the use of the uh, 2016 torso, where it doesn't fit with the gearbox as well as some of the other ones. It does give the arms this really set bad look. So what they did is they put these here, and it does help it look a lot more natural. These are of course movable because they are on a ball joint. You can move these around, get all sorts of poses. You can move these sort of up, move them down like this. It's just all sorts of things you can do with them. And they are relatively nice and very well incorporated into the set. Taking a look at Akimu's mask, just like last year, he has the mask of creation, only this time it is a trans light blue. Now, this is an interesting choice. It does look pretty nice. I actually really do like the mask, although it is an interesting choice that they decided to make it a trans light blue versus sticking with the gold. And it is just kind of an interesting choice. Here is Akimu 2016 with the golden mask of creation. Personally, I do not think this looks as good as Akimi 2016 does look with the trans blue mask creation, but this is just what it looks like with the gold one. And here is Akimu 2015 with the trans light blue mask of creation. Taking a look at Akimu's functions, 
he has two functions. He has the 2015 arm swinging function where all you have to do is turn the gear like so. His arm moves up and down like this and it works very well. And there's a lot of friction in there. So, you know, if you want to, you can hold some poses like this because there is enough friction in that ball joint whereas it allows you to do so rather than the arm just flopping down. His other function is from 2016. It is the swivel function where you move the gear and he will sort of go back and forth side to side, which is also relatively nice. And it does add another sort of way for poses because of the, you know, the extra added joint in the waist. Similar to all of the beasts, Akimu comes with a mask, only this one is Umarak's mask or Umarak the Hunter's mask. It goes from a gunmetal, not a black, it actually goes from a gunmetal to this trans red. It looks actually really cool, sort of a volcanic like look. And it's just kind of a cool thing in the set. Now unlike the beast, if you pop the mask off Kimu by pushing down the eye stock like this, you can actually put on the mask or Umrask sort of uh, volcanic like mask here. And you can sort of put it on a Kimu, and it gives us a very weird look. It does not fit in at all with him, which honestly it shouldn't because you know it is a villain mask, so it doesn't really make sense on a Kimu. And here is the mask on Umarak the Hunter. Also, it doesn't really fit in, but it does definitely fit in a lot better than it does on a Kimu. So, overall, a Kimu the Mask Maker is a relatively good set. There aren't really a lot of problems with him, and I feel like that has to do mainly with the fact that he doesn't really use a lot of technique compared to some of the beasts. He doesn't take a lot of those risks which have not worked out all the time for the beast. There isn't really any problems that I have with Akimu other than his color distribution, because personally to me the color distribution just does not work and there's just too much trans blue. The only other problem that I have with him, just like all of the other sets, is that you know it feels in order to truly enjoy the set you're going to need another set to go with it because all the functions are cool and all but they don't really make sense unless you have another set to go with it and unlike the other sets the mask it does actually you know fit on a Kimu Umarax mask but it still doesn't really make much sense to Kimu it doesn't really add that much play value but it does add a little bit more play value than it does on the other sets so overall I think Akimu is actually a very good set. I do think he's going to be relatively popular with some of the kids because he does have that sort of flashy color scheme and he does have the gold. You know, a lot of colors that just kind of attract kids' eyes and just kind of make kids gravitate towards them. And there's just a lot of relatively good things about him. So that is pretty much it for my review on Akimu, the mask maker. Go ahead and leave your opinions on the set in the comment section below. Until next time, I'll see you guys later.